Thank you so much, uh, Scott. Our third speaker is Kate. I mean, I am not sure how to pronounce your last name. I am sorry. Uh, Kate's introduction is she ambitiously follows her objective in learning to give feedback and evaluation. And her evaluator is Victoria. Trobar. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. It is opposite that I would be Kate's evaluator today in that I was her evaluator for the last speech. Kate Meowen is working on her objective to learn how to become a better evaluator. And so she's taking her speech from our last meeting and asked me to be her evaluator again. She's going to incorporate what she's learned and create an even more effective speech. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Victoria. Kate, uh, what is, there is a title. Let's welcome Kate, please, the stage is yours. The title is Feedback is a Gift. Hello, Toastmasters. I will start with opposite quote of Marshall Goldsmith, a leadership coach and author who said that people would do something, including changing their behavior only if you can demonstrate to them that doing so is in their own best interests as defined by their own values. But how to give that feedback that leaves people to feel motivated, even excited to change their behavior and take your suggestions? The trainer and coach, Elizabeth Page, said that we should provide the feedback in a way that impacts their behavior and they see the result right away. In her opinion, the ABCs of effective feedback are action, benefit, and context or cost. So let's start with first, action. Action is a future-based. It's suggestion that will enable someone to be more successful. When we give someone an action to take, it might sound like, I have some suggestions for you on how to improve the speech structure and how to use transitions to ensure the flow of the speech. You might consider using the Ted Corcoran nine point structure and see the difference. That's a suggestion for the future and a specific action to take to improve future speeches. Now, the second benefit. The benefit is essential. It isn't to you as the evaluator, to club, the club or the organization. The benefit has to come back to the person, the person that we are giving feedback to. What's there for them? What do they care about? What's their bigger purpose? Why do they commit to the club? We have to motivate people by telling them the benefits for themselves. For example, how to motivate people to be active club members. Suggesting being an active member of the club will benefit them to get more chances to speak thus improving their confidence in public speaking and being more successful in their career and life. And now moving to the third, context or cost. We should put the feedback in a context of a bigger purpose. Why do they do what they do? 
why are they in the club? Why do they give speeches in our club? What value can they get from the club or how they can contribute to the club as a whole? That's the context that motivates people and inspires them. Also, we remind them of the cost of not taking action. For example, suggesting timing themselves while preparing the speech. Otherwise, they may exceed the speech time and be disqualified in a contest, despite a very well-structured speech, excellent delivery and meaningful content. And that will be the cost. Some people change because they see the light and other people change because they feel the heat. To summarize, the ABCs of effective feedback by Elizabeth Page are action for future, benefit for themselves, and context or cause that motivates and inspires them. And last but not least, another opposite quote of Marshall Goldsmith that I resonate with is, feedback is a gift. Feedback is a gift because feedback allows you to improve. Therefore, feedback is essential for learning and growth. Do you remember a special teacher or a mentor in your life? Why are they special? And why do we remember them fondly? Because they taught us a lot. They helped us to learn and grow. How? By giving us feedback in a loving, caring, and supporting way. The way they gave us feedback didn't cause resistance. It may have challenged or inspired us to do better. It's great to have such teachers and mentors in our life. But fellow Toastmasters, they are a rare breed. The rest of the people in, in your life who will give you feedback are mere mortals, like just you and me. If we reject feedback from everyone else, we deprive ourselves of learning and growth. We cannot hold back our learning while waiting for such special mentors. We need to learn to accept feedback as a gift from everyone else around us. Thank you. Back to you, Judith. Victoria H. Trebass. <laughs> Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and especially Kate. It is very opposite that you started with two quotes, Kate. They really settled you in to what you were going to talk about. And right away, we knew that you knew what you were talking about. Using another person's quote is very helpful to establish credibility. And they did that really well. Your three points, A, B, and C, action, benefit, and content, or cost, were excellent. Never heard those before. And because you repeated them and because you used them each time you talked about them, it really helped clarify what they could mean. What I would have loved to do, and I put this pretty early, was that what are you gonna quote yourself? Meaning, what are you gonna tell us our story? Exactly the same thing that Sandra said to uh, Muriel, I'm sorry, Muriel said to Donna, we need to hear more from you, Kate. The thing about quoting other people is that that's a great foundation, but where does it apply to you? And personal examples are really important. So where have you used action, benefit, and content or cost in your speeches? How have they helped you become a better evaluator? 
Marshall Goldsmith is really well known, Elizabeth Page, maybe a little less so in all circles. Yet, guess who I'm going to listen to? Kate Meowen. I want to hear Kate's wisdom. She's the one that's going to move me, not those two speakers. You did say, where's there for them? And I think what you meant is what's in it for them, meaning what's in it for the speaker when you give them evaluation. Great point. The biggest thing I want to talk about today, because it was an excellent speech, is that you were good on the speech, but structure-wise, you what we did do a double close. You closed more than once. At one point, the light wasn't green. And you said, and last but not least, then you started saying toast back, uh, feedback is a gift. Start and end with this. Feedback is a gift. You may not want it, but I'm going to tell you why you need it. And then when you end with feedback as a gift, that's really helpful to us. After you said, and last but not least, you talked into the red. So you talked almost another minute and a half after you said, I'm going to close. Consider if that worked. Because when somebody says, and last but not least, the least better be a little less than too long. You, you kept closing and you brought in so much great information. When you talked about a teacher, how great if that, if you had said at the beginning after you gave the quotes. Now for you, who's a teacher you remember that gave you feedback? Because that would have been a great setup. And then when you talk about your A, B, and C, there would have been more context for us. A little bit, turn it around, get some of that stuff in the front, but excellent job and congratulations. Great improvement from the last speech. Mm -hmm. Madam General Evaluator.